Hello, I'm the curmudgeon and welcome to my cellar. This is the weekend of North Texas Role Playing Game Convention and uh, they're uh, actually going on in a much reduced fashion and uh, a large online presence which I'm glad to say I've gotten involved in and um, I had a game today that I want to tell you about don't have a lot of other things to talk about not been getting many comments on anything lately which is how I normally base these so today I'm going to talk about the game I played earlier today number one I played with a person in the States a person in Europe I can't recall where they told me they were and three persons in Ireland the three persons in Ireland were two boys and their mom and they all played on one camera and we worked it worked out okay I wasn't sure if that was gonna work out but it did and um, the boys were 12 and 10 and the 10 year old had been playing since he was five I thought well, okay I've never played with anybody quite this young but I'll give it a go and I'll be darned if we didn't have a great time no, I'm not going to say the boys were brilliant role players. That's not what they brought to the table. What they brought to the table was unbridled enthusiasm. They were really excited. Number one, they were playing in a game online with a guy in the States who had played with, who, whose dad they'd played, their dad had played with me before. And so they were keen mom was keen now I won't name any names to protect the innocent but the youngest the 10 year old he was at first he was sort of shy and quiet and of course with this discord zoom type thing you can talk over each other and a couple of times I had to s quiet and ask somebody to all right what did you say and and it, that happens sometimes in face, you know, face to face games too. So that's not a big deal. But ev eventually, I drew him out, and uh, my will of blame game, which, by the way, I'm running three more times for North Texas RPG Con. All you got to do is go sign up and um, come to the game and uh, play. I can take up to seven or even eight players in a game. Uh, today we had five and that worked well I would have I like six or seven better because it lasts a little longer uh, no it's not an attrition type game that's not the way we play it's a series of, of tests and obstacles and puzzles and such but anyway um, we uh, had some interesting submissions um, for the things that they give me to run the game around but what what struck me was both these brothers were not afraid to ask well what if or what this whatever the funny thing was that the youngest one the 10 year old he tried to set everything we did on fire <laughs> he wanted to know could he take his cooking oil and his flint and tinder and could he set that on fire and could he set this on fire and could he set something else on fire <laughs> <laughs> and at one point um, there was a large box with a, three iron bands around it one of which had a padlock and he wanted to know could he set the box on fire to see what was in it and I said well you can certainly try however let's think about the fact that if this is full of magic scrolls and rare silk tapestries worth a lot of money setting the box on fire isn't going to do that any good is it oh well okay 
Well, then later in that same encounter, he tried to, uh, he wanted to set it on fire again. I think, no, we, we've already established that the thing is not going to burn. But um, they were, uh, it was just enthusiasm, youthful enthusiasm, but also avid enthusiasm. They obviously loved the game. They got into rolling the dice and um, they got into drinking potions. And of course, in this form of online game, everybody rolls all their own dice. And so they had a lot of dice rolling to do and they got a bad number. They you know, threw their hands up in the air and groaned. And when they got a great number, they pumped their fists. And uh, that way, anything that happens, it's not my fault. You, uh, you know, I might roll to hit you, but whatever damage you take, you roll. And when you drink a potion, you roll to see how effective it is. And that way I can't be blamed. Um, we had several interesting puzzles. Um, and they, they looked at stuff in some ways a more basic fashion, but in other ways a little, a little more outside the box. But, but the main thing was that they were just so enthusiastic and they were just having such a great time. And I think, you know, as, as older players, we sometimes get a little jaded and get a little, little bored, you know, with, uh, yeah, we've been there, done that, whatever. Play with, find a kid to play with, teach him the game. See what happens. I predict that you'll get a kind of an a fresh infusion. I know when the game was finally over, <laughs> I went up and bugged my wife for 20 minutes. I was still pumped and running, you know, and that's the way I run. And when I run games at cons, I get very involved in them. My mind's going 700 miles a minute. And then when it's over, it takes a little while to decelerate and to pump all that uh, mental adrenaline out and uh, um, bring in the noradrenaline to uh, counteract. Um, and to me that that's a good that's a great game uh, when everybody when I get that involved of course I'm making it up on the fly as we go so and I I guess I do have a slightly different uh, level of involvement but I, I that's, that's what I enjoy doing is having you give me something and me make a puzzle or a test out of it and you have no idea what it was afterwards um, Give me an example. Let's see. Somebody gave me a shooting star falling to earth. And being attacked by a fierce rabbit. <laughs> Already with the word fierce, you might get an idea that this came from one of my Irish players. But... Um, in, in, in taking what they gave me, I had a, this huge explosion, you know, boom, boom, and they're all knocked uh, on their keisters, and everybody takes some stun damage. And in the bottom of this big crater, there's a little tiny, uh, a little tiny uh, glowing red hot thing. And then uh, they had to go into the, the giant overgrown thicket of, of uh, bush, uh, vines and bushes and hedges and stuff and of course they were attacked by a fierce rabbit who kept ambushing them <laughs> and so uh, the, the boys uh, were the ones who um, the, the youngest was the uh, the man on point and after the second time he got attacked I think I'm gonna uh, would it be okay if I move back to third or fourth position <laughs> so I mean he's 10 years old he'd been playing for five years and um, he got it and it was fun and we all had a we all had a really good time. So that was my I kind of got a I got a jolt. I got some new fresh blood, new fresh plasma injected. So I hope it carries over tomorrow's games. I'm a board gamer. I make no bones about that. I'm an avid board gamer. And I was thinking the other day about the fact that I play Scythe online. 
but I, I don't play anything else that's a board game converted to because I don't I won't pay for it <laughs> or I'll only pay for it once like I did with Psy. But I was wondering what other games would you like to you know board games would go good um, on a computer and the first one I came to came to mind is uh, Tasty Minstrel Games Scoville very simple game you grow peppers and you crossbreed peppers and you get new kinds of peppers and the mechanics are really simple and even the expansion is really simple with a little lab it just gives you some more places to plant peppers on your own and so I sent a note to the company today said man you really ought to do this I really think you should so I'm wondering if you had the option to take a favorite board game and convert it what would it be now I won't go to minis because minis already have so many wonderful PC games out there that are basically miniatures that you give them some orders point them and click and watch them go and I sometimes get involved in one of those just to set up a battle and watch them beat each other up um, I find it fascinating it's kinda like really neat military history cartoons but uh, what other games? I, I know Ticket to Ride is available, um, but um, that didn't appeal to me to play online simply because half the world's already playing it online. But there are other games out there. Scoville is my leading one. Um, I'd love to see Ogre online, but that would be very complex con conversion. I know that. Um, there, there are there are some others so I'm gonna make up a list and you can send me in some suggestions on what you think you'd like to see converted to be able to play it online either you versus the computer or you and some other friends versus the computer or just when, when all of us show up at side there are no computer players it's all us and so that you know um, something to think about. North Texas got hosed by the Weston people um, because um, they wouldn't allow them to back out of all the deposits they had so I'm sure they're taking a bath. North Texas role-playing game convention this is its 11th year I've been to every one it's a great con if you want to help them out go online and buy some con merchandise because I'm sure they've got t-shirts they've got to sell and all the other stuff that you get printed up in advance so if you want to help them recoup some of their money go to their website and buy some stuff there's an auction there's a silent auction tonight and there's something else going on tomorrow night so drop in and see what's going on drop into discord and uh, there's a green room where you can stop in and chat with whoever's hanging out Every time I go to the green room, there's nobody there. <laughs> but at least it says, oh, Tim Kask was here. And then, you know, Tim Kask entered. And six minutes later, Tim Kask entered and left. But, uh, uh, yeah, I need, uh, I need questions and I need commentary. And uh, to produce this thing every week and sound interesting. So uh, don't hesitate. I don't use anybody's names. I won't embarrass anyone. Of course, if I mention something, they know it was them, and I ridicule it <laughs> or scoff. I don't know what that might cause. But anyway, this is a really short one tonight. Uh, let's see, what else can I think of? Just about every convention's been canceled. I will be doing if 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 game hole goes on virtual I will be there uh, I'm pretty sure I'll be running at least one or possibly two virtual games for Gen Con this year I haven't been back to Gen Con in a few years you know uh, physically but uh, when they had to cancel I uh, I told uh, the interested parties that I'd uh, help out so um, look for that look for my theater of the mind games
and uh, come play with me. <laughs> yeah, that didn't sound too weird, did it? Dodada Gobi. Welcome to my cellar. He's the curmudgeon who wrote about the dungeons. Now he's the feller, live from the cellar. Talks about D&D and old school RPGs. Still quite a feller, a curmudgeon in the cellar. Last man round when the race went down. Calling Gary in that Lake Geneva town. Hey Gary, it's an awful mess. Let me edit, it, we'll have success. D and D and Dragon Magazine. He's a curmudgeon who wrote about the dungeons. Now he's the feller, live from the cellar. Talks about D and D and old school RPGs, but still what the feller, a curmudgeon in the cellar. Magic missile, it's a mortar shell. Make it hit in the first level spell. Brought psionics to the game to attack that wizard's brain. DSR and fantasy. Collection of micro armory. Tight with tramp under a tree. High as could be. He's the curmudgeon who wrote about the dungeons. Now he's the feller. Live from the cellar. Talks about D&D and old school RPGs, but he's still quite the feller, the curmudgeon in the cellar. Still quite the feller, the curmudgeon in the cellar. Curmudgeon.